Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel. Now, have you ever wondered why trains used to have cabooses, but now don't? Well, wonder no more. For well over a century, cabooses, the cute, quintessentially red cars at the rear of trains in years past, served an integral function in train operations. Carrying a brakeman and a flagman when brakes were set by hand, when it was time to slow the train, the engineer would blow the whistle. This signaled to the brakemen, and one would emerge from the caboose and work his way toward the engine, while another would leave the engine and work his way back toward the caboose. At each car, the brakeman would stop and turn its brake wheel with a club. Once the train stopped, the flagman would leave the caboose with a flag, lantern, or other visual display and walk back down the track to warn any approaching trains. The caboose was also an office for the conductor, who was responsible for managing the paperwork that accompanied each freight car. Often assigned to a particular man, the interiors of cabooses would be equipped as temporary living quarters and even decorated with personal items like photos and curtains. Considered a home away from home, crews would sometimes sometimes sleep in the cabooses, and many conductors even prepared meals in them. Legend has it, the cupola on top of the caboose was invented by a conductor who used to stack boxes up, sit on them, and look through a hole in the roof of his car. Regardless of its true origins, after about 1863, the cupola became a fixture on cabooses and was used by all the men to observe the train and look for signs of trouble, like overheated hot boxes. Also called a doghouse, bone breaker, hack, hearse, monkey cage, crumb, and snake wagon, the caboose, like the brakemen and flagmen who used them, became unnecessary as technology was developed that performed their jobs just as well and for less money. Air brakes were developed in the 1880s, thus eliminating the need to turn a wheel. Electric-powered signals triggered by track circuits made signaling other trains automatic, and other improvements in bearings made the problem of overheating a thing of the past. In addition, trains grew longer, and the cars became so tall that viewing much of the train from a caboose became impossible. On top of that, computers eventually took over the paper handling duties, so there was no need to store any such paperwork on board. Rather than a cheerful red car, today's trains have small boxes that fit over their rear couplers to monitor operations. Tied into the train's air brake line, these end-of-train devices EOTs, transmit brake pressure information to the engineer. This engineer can also adjust the air brakes with the device. This is useful for emergencies because even if the train breaks into the brakes of the rear part can still be activated. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you might enjoy my other channel, which is called Top Tens Net. You can see that one up there, basically where we do top 10 countdown lists. And if you like this channel, you'll probably really like that one as well. So click up there to check that out. Also below that, we've got my personal YouTube channel where I talk about what it's like to be a YouTube creator, do some behind the scenes stuff, and basically kind of vlog about my daily life. So check that out below the other link. And thank you for watching.